going on, everybody? It's your favorite Auntie Mo. We are back for another episode review of The Real Black China. This is season one, episode four, Back to Basics. Before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think of this video with a thumbs up or a thumbs down and hit the notification button so you will know whenever I upload new content. Y'all, this episode was... Mmm. Mmm. It was okay, wasn't a whole lot went on. Um, entertaining here and there, but nevertheless, let's just go on and get right on into it. Y'all, so Tonio and China, they still at dinner right there at this expensive ass, nice ass restaurant. All these white folks around with their cameras out looking at him and shit, right? Now, Tonio and China are arguing over who paid for her schooling over five, six, seven, eight, nine years ago. The argument is so dumb. It's so dumb, so dumb to where they both got heated. Tonio had to go outside and cool off. China's inside, she's still sitting down at the booth, but she's talking to her assistant Ashton, Ashton right? And um, Tonio is outside talking to Rossi. He's the big cock strong, you know, this, this guy. You know what I'm saying, that dude. She outside talking to him. So, the one thing I noticed about China is when she gets upset, or just in general, it seems like she has a hard time articulating herself. Like if you looked at um, the Wendy Williams interview that she did and the Wood, um, the, the Breakfast Club interview with Charlemagne the, uh, the God, and it was another interview that she was on, she doesn't really have a whole lot of conversation. Like you ask her something and it's very short, it's very to the point, um, she doesn't really elaborate on a lot and when she does elaborate you really don't understand what she's saying and so this wasn't really no different she's talking to Ashton or at least she's trying to talk to Ashton to vent to him again while Tony was outside cooling off and She's just steady repeating the same thing over and over again. Like, she didn't pay for this. She said she paid for this. Are you crazy? No. Look, do you see this? Oh my God, you didn't pay for this. Wow. Like, it was just, it was just real, really, really weird. Of course, Tony on our side, being black and ghetto as hell, cursing, telling uh, Rossi, where the J? I'm ready to get up out this bitch. Yada, yada. I mean, she out there just being black, being black. Oh my God, she's out there being fucking black. So they both had to just, you know, have some time to cool off. And then eventually, Tonio comes back inside. She sits down at the booth with China. And for a minute, they have, they will they start to have a decent conversation. And it goes from them having a decent conversation to them actually having a conversation like mother and daughter. Y'all, the shit was so bipolar. And listen, before anybody gets offended, bitch, I'm bipolar. So I can say that I know one, bi one bipolar to the next. The shit that they did was real bipolar. They was real like ready, like here, knuck if you buck. And then the next thing you know, it's sunshine, lollipops, rainbows and lemon drops you know what I'm saying and so China suggests that you know maybe they go to counseling and they speak with somebody who's an outside person who don't know neither one of them who can't give them an opinion and be biased on you know either end and so surprisingly Tonio does agree to go and have therapy with her. She says that, you know, she does want to work in their relationship, that she loves her, she wants to be a part of her life. At the meantime, though, she is in her green screen, still saying slick shit, like she's just lonely. She's lonely and she needs her mother and she misses her mother and blah, blah, blah. No, really, I really, I think, Tonio, you need her. Yes, every girl needs their mother, but it seems like Tonio needs China way more than China need her. The relationship with them is so far beyond Dr. Field, like that, the, the shit is wild. So good luck to whomever the therapist is that they gonna talk to. Now, after they talk, they go outside and you, like they get up, they hug it out, like, it was it was cool it was real real cool but it did not seem natural it seemed so fake like china and tonio couldn't even look each other in the eyes like really they they their hug wasn't even genuine their interaction did not seem really really genuine i don't know if because they were just nervous because they were in front of the camera or what it was but 
nothing about it now about with them arguing the real raw emotion that seemed real but afterwards i don't know if it was you know something in the contract they had to fulfill and so in order for you to get these points and these commas i'm gonna need y'all bitches to pull it together and act like you love each other maybe that's what happened i'm not sure but Afterwards, like the next day, you know, China's at her crib and Treasure comes over and Ashton comes over. And so she's just explaining to them, you know, everything that happened. And like she said, Treasure's old school. Treasure been seeing this shit. Ashton is new to this. He's new to her team. So he still feels like there's a glimmer of hope that they can work it out. Hopefully, you know, if they go see this therapist, things will get better. You know, he wants to um, arrange for them to go and see the therapist, this, that, and the other. Now, Ashton, look here. Don't try too hard, baby, because you done tried with, you done tried two times already. And both times, it really didn't work out. But, you know, we gonna see what happened with this therapist. But y'all, again, just the interaction with them. Y'all, excuse, excuse me, I keep scratching my nose. Now I ain't on that shit. It's just my allergies is fucking with me. But we gonna see how that goes from there. You know, that was, that was, it was good at the end of dinner to see them actually be a mother and daughter for a minute and not go at it like two bitches off the street. They actually showed some sort of love and mutual respect for one another. So hopefully after they see this counselor or this therapist or whomever, they can get back to some sort of common ground because you don't want to see nobody arguing with their mama and, and no ratchet shit like that. Regardless, even though it does make it for good TV, you still don't want to see nobody, especially two black queens. I'm sorry, you don't. You don't want to see them going at it like we got to fight the world at it as it is. You don't want us fighting each other. That ain't a good look. So hopefully she'll work out with, with the two of them. Now, China meets up with this artist. Her name is Densia, right? She's an artist from West Africa. I don't know if she sings, if she, if she raps. I don't know what she does, but I can tell you how she looked. She looked high as giraffe ass. I mean, she looked high than bald eagle coochie. Her eyes was barely doggone open. She had a banging ass house, though, baby. Her house was... Banging sister was doing that her house was beautiful, but um, that's her home girl or whatever, right? She's also the girl that went into business with China when they opened up that skin lightening cream, right? Now, I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna try some of that because bitch got some, um, you know what I'm saying? Well, I used to have black elbows, you know what I'm saying? That's a good cocoa butt and shit like that. But, you know what I'm saying? That would be something. I don't see what's wrong with women wanting to use the lightening cream. Now, if you're trying to make bleach your skin and all that, I don't, I don't believe in all that. If you have certain dark areas that you're trying to, you know what I'm saying, lighten up, ain't nothing wrong with that. But both of them got a lot of backlash when they came out with this whitening cream. Like whitening cream ain't been around for years as it is. Densia says that um, she got a lot of flack because she's from West Africa. And I guess colorism is a huge thing in the African community. Us over here, us Americanized Africans, like, you know what I'm saying? It can be a common thing from here to there. But um, China as well got a lot of backlash for it too because if you've seen China in earlier, earlier throwback, TBT throwback, Thursday Chinas, she was dark. She was, she was dark skinned. She was like my color almost darker than me. And I'm a beautiful brown skinned girl, baby. Ew. But um, they were talking about that. They started to talk about the lawsuit that China has against her from her former hairdresser. Now, I don't know if y'all be all up in the entertainment news or whatever like that, but this former hairdresser of hers has a lawsuit against her for claiming that China was chasing after her with a knife. Now, they showed the surveillance camera from China's, uh, I guess, her front parking lot or whatever. Y'all, the shit was hilarious as hell. The dresser... The hairdresser was like hurling shit at China. It was funny. And she had one of them angry ass throws behind her. You know, if you mad at a motherfucker and you got that slow motion, but then you kind of reach back, you like, bitch. That's how she was throwing shit at China. It was funny as hell. So she was talking about that. Um, she was also, what else was she talking about? She was talking about how, um, the rumors that she had to deal with when she would had a now I don't know if she announced it if it leaked some kind of way but somehow or another about her going to Harvard now she says that she wasn't actually going to Harvard the school well, bitch we already knew that not nothing against you nothing like that but bitch you weren't going to Harvard she said she was going to Harvard online so I'm guessing pretty much anybody can get accepted to um, Harvard online because that's where she was actually going but anyways um, they talk about that and then she says that she wants to get into music now did y'all know China wanted to be a rapper I did not know that I had no clue 
whatsoever that China wanted to be a rapper at all. That the shit just blew my mind when I heard that. But apparently, she said Nicki put her on something, Drake put her on something. I don't know. Maybe it was just a bop, and I just wasn't paying no attention to it or whatever it was. I don't know. But she want to be a rapper, y'all. And so she wants her and um, Densia to go meet up with Molly Ma so Molly Ma can help them collab and put something together now. If y'all remember Molly Ma, he was a dude that was fucking with Malaysia. I mean, sorry, with uh, Masika and Miss Nikki Baby on a season of Love and Hip Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. He big scoop ball head dude. Think he the shit or whatever, right? So they supposed to be going to meeting up with Molly Ma to work on some kind of bop for China's new rap career. She trying girl. Now look. Now look, now look, now look. I believe, hey, anybody that wanna go out there and get the money, hey, go get the money. Do what you do. You know what I'm saying? Hey. I'm 39 out there trying to go get the money my damn self. I can't, I, I, I sure can't say nothing about it. But it's just some things that I know ain't my niche. You know what I'm saying? Ain't my niche. And um, China rapping, I got to hear you featured on something first. Because I, I need to snip it just to know if this is something that I can really take seriously from you. Because just hearing that right now, that ain't nothing I can take seriously. Because I don't see nothing like that taking off. Like, I don't see you being a rapper. No. I, no, I don't see that happening at all. But we're going to see, you know, how this how this go or whatever. Um, Y'all, so China gets to Molly Ma's house, right? Now, as soon as she walked through the door, I'm surprised the bitch could even breathe the whole time she was in there. Molly was just sucking up all the air out from around this child with all these damn compliments he was giving her. I mean, he was he was he was almost desperate with it. You're the best that ever happened and you're the biggest thing. You better than Nikki and and you paved the way for these females and these females want to be you and when I see you, I just see stardom and I just know I can build something with you and and you just the bomb like you're perfect, like you the prototype and yada yada yada. She looking at him like I'm looking at him. She's just like, "Mhm." Mm Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. China wasn't feeling that shit. China wasn't fooled by that shit. She wasn't. She wasn't. It was. Ugh. It was way too much, right? So. She gets in the studio with Molly Ma, her homegirl Densia shows up, and then Jeremiah shows up, right? Now, she wanted to clear the air with Jeremiah. Apparently, there was some kind of issue with some music that happened with them years ago. Somehow, another something got leaked. So, she was worried about working with Jeremiah at first. But as soon as he came in, they apologized, they squashed, and they moved on or whatever, right? So, Jeremiah's like, all right, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead and play me some of what you got. So, she starts playing something. Now, I don't know if the music that they were playing in the background was actually China's music or if they just played some random music because she's not quite yet ready to release her music. Either way it go, the music they played was whack as hell. Y'all, it was whack as hell. It was whack as hell. I don't know what it was. It was all instrumental with nobody rapping over it. It sounded like some free some free snippets you can get from iTunes or uh, some, some SoundCloud shit. Not saying nothing against SoundCloud, but it sounded like some, some free beats you can get so you won't get no kind of copyright law, some shit like that. It didn't sound, it wasn't no bop. It wasn't no beat. It wasn't no two-step. It wasn't no. It wasn't no dipping low, bring it up. So it wasn't no drop no eagle to that. Like it was. It was really whack. Whatever the hell it was, it was very, very whack, and I was very, very disappointed. But she did say that she's nervous about dropping her music, and so she wants to make sure she gets it right. Yada yada yada. So again, this just could have been some random music that they were playing. You know, I don't know. I don't know, but that can't be China music because, baby, if that was China music, baby, stick to what you know how to do it. And that's having a big old bubble butt, wearing the hell out some clothes and some lace fronts, and, you know what I'm saying, your lashes, your makeup, do that. Because, baby, if that was your bop, girl, stop with the bop because that bop ain't hot. Don't even do it. Don't even play yourself like that, y'all. Don't even play yourself like that. But y'all, that was the end of the episode. This episode was very boring. 
Nothing about it seemed genuine as far as the interactions with everybody go. Even when they were in the studio, it did not seem genuine whatsoever. It seemed like they all got a text message from a producer who was like, hey, let's meet up over here. I'm going to bring a camera in. I'm going to hit action, and I want to see you niggas do your thing. It was very robotic. It was very robotic. Nothing about it was genuine. Nothing about it really flowed. Like it seemed like nobody really knew what to say. It was just some, it was, it was, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, that was the end of the episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed the review because uh, the episode itself was boring AF. But um, let me know what y'all thought about this review. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share. And Auntie will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.